Pune University of University of Cambridge, University of Manchester, and Professor Kuve's work and teaching has been in the areas of uh, category theory and logic, uh, in particular model theory. Uh, and apart from the boring stuff, he has also published uh, papers and work on Pokemon battles and game theory. So maybe you could tell about that as well. Uh, so without further ado, I'd request uh, Professor Kuve to go take over. Um, thanks a lot, Abhimanyu. That was totally unnecessary. <laughs> I, I, the students know me as their teacher, and uh, that's the best introduction I can have. Uh, so, good evening, everyone. Uh, I just want to request all of you, yeah, whoever wants to keep their videos on, that would be uh, helpful if they can, yeah, if they are worth showing their faces <laughs> currently. Uh, uh, I'm just asking because uh, I I generally like the feel of talking to people. Yeah, we are not sitting in an actual classroom, physical classroom, uh, but rather we are sitting in a virtual cla class class kind of setting. Uh, there is no syllabus planned for today. Yeah, I'm just going to talk about some pictures and uh, hopefully you will enjoy that. And uh, as uh, Abhimanyu said, that my areas of research have been uh, category theory and logic and model theory. But uh, when I joined IIT Kanpur, which is almost five years ago, I, that, that's a long time. So at that time, I, I got my first PhD student and uh, Shantanu. So he said that he wanted to work on representation theory because he liked the subject. And then I agreed. And so I have spent almost four, four and a half years on representation theory now. And uh, I want to talk about that topic today rather than doing something else yeah, than the stuff that I, I did when I was a student or a postdoc. So I will be mostly talking about the work with my students or uh, what they did. And I will also like uh, perhaps link the references like that. And please feel free to stop me at any point. Yeah, I would be very happy to discuss things with you because this is not a lecture as such. Yeah, it's meant to be a, a conversation. And I hope two-way conversation, yeah, not a monologue. <laughs> right. So uh, I'm going to start with this, a blank whiteboard. Yeah, a blank whiteboard is like, a, uh, what, what can you say? It's a blank sheet of paper and you don't have anything written over there. Yeah, and if you are a painter by heart, then you would like to fill this canvas out with something. And it is said rightly that a picture is worth a thousand words. Yeah, so we can uh, draw some picture and get some feeling out of it. And I'm going to talk about various different kinds of pictures today. And generally pictures do attract students. At least they did as when I was a student. And the most attractive pictures for me were graphs. Yeah, I really liked graph theory as a student. Like I did not know there was a subject called graph theory, but when you sort of under, learn about the Chinese post problem for the first time, then you are excited. Yeah, like you can just talk about some pictures. You can explain certain things even to your younger cousins who are just in the uh, who are just sitting in the uh, like school and still they can do uh, they can learn about these things a picture says thousand words but now the catch here is that as you grow older then you will have to explain those thousand words using words yeah, so that is what the researcher's job is. You had to first look at pictures and then understand patterns and try to explain what those things might say. Right, so 
Is there anybody here who does not know what a graph is? I mean, I'm just asking some, some simple questions so that people start talking. Anybody who doesn't know what the graph is? Okay, so I will take silence as no. So now one of you should speak and tell me what the graph is for you. Or should I pick random people and ask them? There's somebody, Mohit, Mohit Kulkarani. Do you want to speak? Can you hear me? Yes. So, uh, I mean, a graph is uh, a collection of uh, nodes and uh, edges connecting them. Okay, yeah. good. So, a graph is a collection of nodes and edges. And what are edges for you? Uh, things that connect nodes. Okay, so if I draw this, then is this a graph for you? Uh, I, I think it is. You think Should it, it be is? closed? Should it be closed? Right? Should it be closed? Uh, what is the meaning of closed? Uh, by closed, I mean... Uh, Okay, so uh, V is a set, okay? And what is E? Uh, edges. Edges, so like E and V, is there any connection between them? Yes, there's somebody in the chat. Okay. Sir, is it a subset of V cross V? Yes, it is a subset of V cross V, very good. Now, uh, like a simple question I want to pose is whether it for a graph is a simple graph in your mind, undirected graph, or it is a directed graph. Okay, let's ask somebody else. Pradyumna from Y20. Are you there? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Tell me. Sir, I don't understand the node and edge notation. All I understand is a graph is a representation of data. Representation of? Representation of data. Hello. Uh, some data is given and be represented on some okay. plane or okay. something. Okay, okay, okay. Representation of a data. Very good. Uh, that's, a, that's a good way of interpreting things. Yes, then uh, uh, I can't see some names perhaps. So yeah, uh, Vivek Kumar Singh. Yes, sir. Yes. Can you say something? Can you repeat the question? What is a graph for you? Yeah, uh, for me, a graph is a collection of vertices and edges, where edges is a subset of V cross V, and edges are basically the collection of those lines. Okay, uh, that, that is okay. So this is, let's say, my vertex set ABC, but do I draw arrows or I don't? Oh, and that's like, uh, I like the undirected graphs. They're less you like undirected graphs. Fine. Okay. So these are undirected graphs. Then uh, some people, um, so undirected graphs means that if AB belongs to E, then BA will also belong to E. Okay. That is an undirected graph. Then another question which commonly comes up is whether AA is allowed to be in E. If you allow it, then you don't call it simple. If you don't allow it, you call it simple, like loops, yeah, something like this. So the, the title of today's talk is Quivers. So what are quivers? So we, we are all Indians. We have heard about stories of Ram and Ravan fighting as we grew up and Mahabharata. So everybody knows what quivers are. Yeah? Arjun had a, a special quiver which had unlimited supply of arrows. 
right so quivers in mathematics are exactly similar but we are going to change our perspective from graphs slightly we are going to allow so these are graphs which are directed yeah so they will have a direction moreover multiple parallel edges are allowed multiple parallel edges and loops are allowed now a simple way of encoding this data is a quadruple so a quiver which we were we are going to write with this curly letter will be denoted by this quadruple and this is q0 q1 s and t okay so q0 q1 s and t uh, q0 is known as the vertex set then this is the arrow set yeah here there are arrows this is the source function and this is the target function now i of, of course need to describe what source and target functions are so these are functions from arrows to vertices so for example if i take the same picture and i add these directions then i will get the quiver so here there are three vertices a b c there are three arrows which we will call alpha beta and gamma and there are uh, and what is the source of alpha can like is the definition intuitive enough what is the source of alpha a a very good source uh, target of gamma c mm. yes so source and target of c is the same gamma source of source and target of gamma is the same which is c yeah so source and target are the obvious functions from where we are starting and where we are going okay so this is a very simple generalization of quivers we don't have any conditions so far that there are no directed cycles in in them so any questions about what quivers are okay so that's simple Can yes. you please repeat once? I just got disconnected the the quiver. Okay, so a quiver is a is this four tuple. We have some vertices, some arrows, some and two functions which are source and target functions. Okay, okay, sir. Where what is allowed? Like for each. arrow has a source and a target vertex then multiple arrows are also allowed so for example i can draw something here yeah this i can call delta so multi multiple parallel arrows are allowed and loops are also allowed is that clear yeah i hope it is yes sir yes sir am i audible yeah okay excuse right. sir so now once we have a, yes uh, what exactly is the difference between a general graph and a quiver because from a general graph you could easily construct a source function or a target function yes so in a general graph as done in graph theory you don't have multiple parallel edges and loops uh, okay 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 got it yeah? so that is like we allow more flexibility okay okay yeah here e was a subset of b cross b so we were sort of talking about a comma b but here a comma b is the label given to both alpha and delta so instead of just talking about an arrow with the pair source comma target we instead label the arrows themselves and then we explicitly state what their source and target functions are okay so once you have a quiver or any graph then the next natural thing is 
can you go from one point to another point yeah i mean for example consider the uh, network of roads or highways yeah a highway network is a good example of like can you go from let's say delhi to kanpur via lucknow yeah like those are the paths which we are interested in so paths in the quiver now paths means you have to start somewhere and you have to end somewhere so uh, the formal definition for that is that it is a sequence of arrows such that the target of alpha i is equal to source of alpha i plus 1 then only we can go ahead a very simple notion right so here n is bigger equal 1 so first of all like uh, i am giving you one very simple example this is known as the loop quiver l1 there is only one vertex and there is only one arrow now can you describe all paths to me rahul sethi can you do that for me please okay sir so the uh, graph is given by just one vertex right and yeah the loop alpha yeah loop alpha uh, right so i think all the paths would simply be alpha repeated uh, k number of times where k is inside z correct so alpha alpha square alpha cube and so on yeah. so how many paths are there there are infinitely many paths yeah countably many countably infinitely many paths in this simple picture very good okay so l1 has infinitely many paths but now uh, each path has a length and we said just now n has to be bigger equal to 1 but yeah that's that's not fair yeah we should also allow the zero length paths so that we can say something more so instead uh instead of saying anything like this so this is for n equal to n bigger equal 1 plus we also add to this collection a lazy path e at a vertex for each v in q0 so whenever we have a vertex in um in our quiver then we add a lazy path which does nothing which just sits there it has length 0 but for each vertex we have a lazy path so here we will have e1 yeah one is the path and then this is this clear to everyone that we have a zero length path one length path two length path and three length path and so on we have paths of all lengths okay now i I will take another example. This we will denote by a two. Here I have alpha one and alpha two, and the vertices are labeled one, two, and three. So what are the paths in here? Udit. Uh, sir, here the paths would be e one, e two, e three. Correct. Alpha one, alpha two, and then alpha one, alpha two. Means alpha one, comma alpha two, and then alpha one, alpha two. Okay, so now we will choose alpha two, alpha one instead of alpha one, alpha two. Yeah, because I have written target of alpha i is source of alpha i plus one. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So why in this sequence alpha is raised to a power? Yes, Aditya, that's a good question. So that is a shortcut to write alpha, alpha, alpha k times. Yeah, mathematicians are laziest people in the world. They want to invent notation to save their job. Yeah, so <laughs> that's why we introduce this uh, power notation. Right. So there are six paths in here: three zero length paths, two length one paths, and two uh, and only one length two path. So is the concept clear here? Okay, so Shiv Kumar Yadav, yes, ask me. Sir, shouldn't it be alpha one, alpha two? Yeah, so I said that because, that is uh, the convention I'm going to follow. 
the convention will be that the, yes. the target of alpha i should alpha 1 should be so a source of alpha 1 alpha 2 yeah so that's what alpha 1 and alpha 2 so what is the target of alpha 1 2 yes and source of alpha 2 2 yes so therefore we have written it in such a way that target of alpha uh, alpha 1 is equal to source of alpha 2. So that's how alpha n up to alpha 1. This is a convention. If you prefer it other way, you can do it. The theory will not be affected. I'm choosing this convention. Yeah. Okay, so these are the six paths in this picture. Yeah. Okay, now uh, we, we will consider one more example which will be of our interest. This is the loop pivot L2, alpha, beta, and 1. Now, is anybody willing to tell me what sort of paths are there in this? Uh, am I audible? Um, um, yes, you are audible. I... Okay, so the path would be like there would be a E1 and then from we would have some bijection kind of a thing from N cross N to alpha comma beta so that for any pair uh, uh, I comma yes. J, we have Farzan. alpha to the power. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, sir. Somebody was answering. Um, Hello. Mm, uh, yes, sir. I am audible. Then Kudit is asking me. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think uh, Sir's connect uh, internet connection is faltering. Um, he'll be back in a couple of minutes. I'm really sorry for this. I don't know what's happening. Maybe I got a message or something on my phone and then got disconnected. It's a blank screen. I'm so sorry for that. Yeah. All right, so I had drawn this example and I was talking about this. Uh, alpha and beta and Udit was answering the question. This is known as L2. Even was there and I was asking whether uh, he can list all length one paths. Yes, there is something in the chat. Yes, uh, Ishank. Yes, good. You could have spoken instead. Alpha, alpha square, alpha Yes, beta, beta, square, beta, trilly k, and then alpha, beta, summation, alpha, trilly k, beta. Okay, 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 okay. Now, uh, where is the summation coming into play? And there, there are no sums here. So, uh, alpha, beta, you are right. Then, alpha, square, beta, square, also you are right. 
but you have to do three. now i am connected to iit internet hopefully that will persist yes i was talking to myself i shouldn't i i will repeat it because uh, the connection got disconnected I, uh, okay so uh, i was asking that can you list all the length three parts it will be u m plus all the set of alpha to the power m plus beta to into beta to the power m for m and n can be any integer uh, can you repeat please uh, u m plus uh, alpha to the power even, m even even and alpha to the power m alpha to the power m and uh, into beta to the power m okay For m and n can be any integer. Just the positive, positive integer. But I can also repeat after this. Like if this is m one, this is m two. I can also repeat repeat alpha to the power m three after this. And again, I can repeat beta to sorry uh, without a comma. I can repeat beta to the power m four after that. Okay. Yeah, and I can continue like this. Yes. finitely many times either ending at beta or alpha whatever it is so i mean we can understand this but it is complicated so this picture particular which we call as the loop mirror l2 has too many paths yeah whether this is a countable collection or not that's up to you to uh, decide yeah that's a good exercise but these are all the paths yeah i can write alpha 1 uh, just alpha then beta then alpha square alpha beta beta alpha are different the interesting thing here is that there is no commutative property between alpha and beta you can first do alpha then beta and first do beta and then alpha they are different so therefore there are lots and lots of paths in in here is this idea clear yes we are assuming paths to be of finite length because we want to uh, make our keep our life simple so far yeah we don't want to keep on doing uh, other things so we are assuming our yes paths to be of finite length okay so uh, i don't unfortunately i don't have the previous slides when i get disconnected the whiteboard gets erased but i hope you you understand this that how the paths are generated you have length 0 length 1 and up to others yeah so these are all the paths now what to do with them we are going to construct something uh, algebraic with the help of just these pictures for example uh i mean first of all let me finish uh, let, let me say that i will use the notation k to denote either real numbers or complex numbers all of you know what real numbers and complex numbers are now they are fields okay and i want to explain like i, I will without explaining it i will write what i want to say so i want to say that this single vertex quiver with with no arrows in it that corresponds to k then a single vertex quiver with one loop on it that corresponds loop alpha that will correspond to the polynomial ring in one variable then this particular picture 
will correspond to uh, let me just make make it simple just one and two this particular picture will correspond to the set of all upper triangular matrices where a b c are in k and this big picture will correspond yeah this picture will correspond to the polynomial ring in two variables but which are non commutative polynomials okay non commutative which means x and y and xy is not necessarily equal to yx xy and yx are different so we want to make sense of this particular table that we have over here Yeah, k is either real numbers or this. So all of you understand this notation, k x. This is polynomial ring in one variable. The elements are polynomials. Uh, do you understand matrices? Two cross two upper triangular matrices. Yes. Yeah. If there is anyone who who doesn't know these things, maybe this is something new for you. Yeah, K X Y. This is new for you. That it is a polynomial ring in non-commutative, a non-commutative polynomial ring. So here X Y and Y X are different. So X Y square, X Y X, they are all written with some coefficients, and you write their uh, linear combinations. Yes, there is a question in the chat. give quick examples of what aditya these are all examples so tell me what i should give example for a non commutative polynomial perhaps okay so for example yes so 2 xy minus 3 xy square x this is a non non commutative polynomial you just don't combine all the powers of x and all the powers of y yeah together you are allowed to say repeat them as many times as you like okay so sir uh, i have a question yes but sir the, uh, the this product x into y would be the product in the field right product x into y no x and y are variables they are just symbols so x y is just an expression Uh, yeah so but the product is actually uh, to be done in the uh, field of i mean the reals of complexes right see you can multiply two polynomials you cannot really multiply like x multiplied by y is just the expression xy yes, you, so what you, i was thinking was that ultimately when we will multiply the by the commutative property of multiplication in real numbers so it would not matter the the order I mean, that's what... that is so you are what you are confusing uh, this with is substitution yeah as rishabh yes. kothari has written in the chat yeah there is an evaluation map yes there is an evaluation map and if you are evaluating this polynomial by substituting for x and y to real numbers then that is commutative but you need not do that and uh, you don't have to evaluate in a they are using variables uh, using substitutions from real numbers i said that k is the field of coefficients so i am choosing this 2 and minus 3 from either real numbers or complex numbers but x and y themselves are just symbols they don't mean anything okay yeah they are symbols and we are sort of developing the process of generating new symbols from the existing ones like x is there y is there so xy is a new symbol which we can sort of understand as the multiplication multiplication of y by x yeah uh, yes akarsh you are not getting the third part how is this representing upper triangular matrix this picture yeah the picture is representing that that i will make clear soon 
Yeah, uh, I will explain something about that. But I, my question is right now, whether you understand upper triangular matrices, the properties which you should focus on on this side is that take any element, like take a polynomial or take a matrix, you can multiply it by the scalar from either real numbers or complex numbers. So the scalar multiplication exists. Moreover, you can add two upper triangular matrices to get an upper triangular matrix. You can uh, add two polynomials to get a new polynomial. Similarly, you can add two uh, non-commutative polynomials to get a non-commutative polynomials. So what sort of operations are present on this side? That you have scalar multiplication, you have addition, and moreover, you also have multiplication. So you can multiply two polynomials and get a new polynomial. You can multiply two upper triangular matrices and still get an upper triangular matrix. And same thing over here. Yeah, you can multiply two non-commutative non uh, polynomials and get a non-commutative polynomial. So you have got multiplication as well. So just a word of war, caution against the difference between these two. Scalar multiplication, you are taking an element of your structure and multiplying it with an external object, which is a scalar. Whereas multiplication, you are choosing two elements from within the structure and you are constructing something new out of it. Yeah, yeah. so such a thing, so scalar multiplication by elements of K, if I write, then on this side, you have got something that we call a K algebra. A K algebra is just this data that you have scalar multiplication by K, you have addition and you have multiplication. So these three operations, if they are present together, it's a K algebra. Now, because you have addition and scalar multiplication, you already have a vector space over here. Okay, so these two together, I'll use a different color. These two together give you a K vector space. Since everybody here has already done 102, so they know what vector spaces are. Yeah, and each vector space is also associated with a dimension. So uh, what is the dimension of this upper triangular matrix ring or algebra? Can anybody tell me? Three. Three, very good. What is the dimension of Kx? Uh, it's basically uh, infinite. Yes, it's countably infinite. And here also it is infinite. Correct. And whereas here it is one. Okay, now, now comes the connection between these two. I don't have the old uh, file with me, but what is the connection between these? So what? how many paths exist in here? One. Which is the zero length path. Yes, Vineet? Yes, sir. Yes, so this K, I can as well write as K E1. Yes. How many paths exist here? The infinite. Infinitely many. So I can write this yeah, as K E1 sum K alpha sum K alpha square sum and dot dot dot. Yes. Now, whatever number of paths are present here, those many, the, that is the dimension of the algebra on this side. Okay, so now consider this. How many paths are there? Three. Three. 
E1, E2, and let me call this alpha. So the word, the element here that corresponds to E1, here it corresponds to E2, and here it corresponds to alpha. Also, the numbering is suggestive. You label this one, two, one, two. So then the paths from vertex one to one, how many are there? One. So here you have just one, E1. From one to two, there is one path, which we call alpha. So we have B over here. And from two to two, there is C. Yeah, I mean, two to two, there is E2. So we are putting something here. Whereas there is no, there is no path from vertex two to vertex one. So we put a zero. So here we have paths and here we have, we, we are taking the corresponding sum. So Ke1 plus Ke2 plus Ke alpha. So this is a three dimensional vector space over here. And we have already seen here, this situation is more complicated. So you have more things over here. So uh, if you have understood what I wrote, then this is a question for you. That I have three vertices and I have two arrows. So can you tell me what would be the corresponding algebra? Three cross three upper triangular matrix. Yes, three cross three upper triangular matrices. So A, B, C, zero D, E, and zero zero F, where all of them are in the field K. Uh, there is also a shortcut to write this. Yeah. So usually we write this as K K K zero K K and zero zero K so that I don't have to explain what it is. Yeah, you understood this notation easily. This is corresponding to A2. We get this. Corresponding to A3, we'll get something else. Now we can, we also have this picture and here the directions are reversed, but it is also known as A2, yeah. This is also A2 and uh, what will be the thing corresponding to this? Not the usual people. Let's let me choose somebody else. Uh, so Sudhanshu, if you are there. Or Vasu. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. So it will be a three by three matrix. Uh, so uh, uh, we have paths from one to one itself, mm -hmm. two to two, and three to three. So diagonal elements would be non zero. Yes. And then we have path from one to two. Yes. So, so yes, yeah, so this one would be filled, and three to two. So that would be three to two. Yes. So that is one. Yes. Other would be zero. Now, uh, now the interesting question to ask is how do we multiply such matrices? Earlier, like upper triangular matrices multiply to upper triangular matrices. That was easy to understand. But how do we multiply something like this? The rule is simple. So in some sense, like uh, I will use some technical term now. So the, the path algebra, corresponding to a quiver is the K algebra generated by the paths in the quiver. Yes, there is something in chat. In the in the first example to which, which path C corresponds to. Uh, this C, yes, that's a good question. That is the path beta alpha. Yeah, beta alpha is a path from one to three. 
Okay. So, uh, path algebra corresponding to a quiver is the K algebra generated by the paths in the quiver. So, we have already seen the concept of paths. And we just, so we understand it as a vector space. As a vector space, it is generated by paths. We are just taking this sum notation. Yeah? This direct sum, this the direct sum, this so many times as, as many paths are there. Now, the, the, what remains to answer is what is the multiplication? So, the multiplication is given by this simple rule. So, you have uh, beta n up to, I mean, beta m up to beta 1. This is the first path. And uh, you want to compose it yeah, with alpha n up to alpha 1. So these are the two paths and you want to write their multiplication. So we are going to describe the multiplication in the algebra using multiplication of paths. Okay. So this is given by, so beta m up to beta 1 followed by alpha n up to alpha 1 if target of alpha n is equal to source of beta 1. So basically, if you are, uh, if you can join those two paths to get the longer path, then that longer path is the composition. If that is not true, then you just say it is zero. Otherwise. Okay, this is zero. So, for example, in this picture that, that we have over here, this picture, what is the multiplication of alpha by alpha? Can anybody say? Zero. Alpha. Yes, zero, because the target of alpha is not same as source of alpha. Multiplication of beta by alpha, again, zero. zero. Yeah, whereas alpha by even, Alpha. Alpha by even is alpha. Yes. So that those things we have to keep in mind, and then that that gives you a multiplication on this whole structure. So that's why you have got three different algebraic structures present here. The first one is scalar multiplication, then addition and multiplication. Okay, so that's how the path algebra is generated. So uh, you understand what, what we have done so far? Uh, the path algebra corresponding to a quiver. So I have a question. Like, uh, can we put lazy paths in between the path also? It has to only the beginning. No, lazy paths, uh, I mean, which in the beginning of paths means... Uh, no, no, it's only a lazy path or we can uh, add more, uh, uh, like more arrows to that path. Like even alpha one like here. So that a lazy, path? Paths, lazy paths do correspond to only vertices of the quiver. Okay. Okay. I'm thinking probably a loop by if I do it like that. No, no, no. So I, see, yeah. there, there is a difference between a loop and a lazy path. So alpha is a loop in this example, but lazy path even just sits there. It doesn't do anything. Okay. What I was saying was probably I was corresponding to a loop. If I allow even... No, maybe. no, no. So uh, there is a difference uh, between lazy paths and loops. Yeah, so it... I understood, it's, so it's only vertex. It's not going to move anything. Yes, yes. So alpha times even is alpha. Then even times alpha is also alpha in this case. It is like identity. Yeah, in, in more technical terms, you call it a local identity. Here, yes. Uh, uh, here we could also have like uh, E one times alpha times E two uh, in this A two graph. Yes. So, uh, uh, are you asking about this expression? Uh, e one, then alpha, and then E two. Uh, yes. Yes. This expression will evaluate to be alpha because you use this associativity of path concatenation 
and you first do alpha even which is alpha then a2 alpha is again alpha so yeah. the bar composition is associative so yes okay thank you yes any other questions about this okay so uh now look uh, yes abdul no not abdul who is this sir mohit yeah so i wanted to ask uh, sir when we write e2 alpha e1 equal to alpha uh, but actually if we traverse those paths we actually loop once then move ahead and then loop and uh, so can we directly uh, equal that to alpha yes so that as i said earlier even doesn't really move it's not loop so talking about even means i just sit there continue to be where i am okay okay i just sit there then go along alpha and then i just sit there which is alpha yeah the ultimate effect is just alpha that's why the word lazy yeah uh, it doesn't move right any other questions right so uh, i will explain something else now so for example i will give you two polynomials yeah simple 3 plus 2x and multiply it by 5 minus x and whatever the result is you have to put x square to be equal to 0 so can you do this multiplication what will be the constant term fifteen fifteen very good and what will be the coefficient of x seven so that will be minus three and seven yeah so seven x and then nothing else you were supposed to get minus two x square but we killed so put x square is equal to 0 so essentially like we killed x square now uh, this killing process can also be described using quivers so a relation on a quiver is a k linear combination of paths okay it is a k linear combination of paths so for example in this quiver now alpha beta we called it a2 1 2 3 now i can declare beta alpha to be my relation k linear combination of paths so say beta alpha like 1 times beta alpha is a relation so basically whenever we have beta alpha then we declare it to be zero so if you see the previous screen that we had here we had this this expression yeah k k k 0 k k and 0 0 k now we are killing beta alpha which corresponds to this entry so what will we get over there so this corresponds to now after killing that you will get 0 0 k k 0 0 k k and 0 0 k this is also a k algebra or if you are writing this this alpha which we call the loop quiver l1 and this is a relation that whenever you have you see alpha q you replace it with alpha square that is my relation which is allowed so after putting this relation whatever i will get that is also k algebra 
So this corresponds to the polynomial link quotiented out with x cube minus x square. So these quotients of polynomial rings, which are also vector spaces. Now this is a finite dimensional vector space. So they are also k algebras. So in this way, we can talk about more k algebras. And in fact, there is a theorem that each finite dimensional k algebra can be presented using quivers and relations. Now, all finite dimensional k algebra, that is a bit too much to ask for. But the, the beauty of this, this result is that only pictures and blocking some paths. So like this, uh, these relations are like, if you are coming to Kanpur via Lucknow, then you cannot proceed to Varanasi. If that is a rule set by police, then you have to follow that. Yeah. Whereas if you came to Kanpur from Delhi via some other route, then you are allowed to go. So just by declaring some relations on a, a quiver, we can do, uh, we can deal with any finite dimensional algebra. This is a very powerful result. There are some, some things missing here, like there should be a note here, some adjectives. It's called basic and connected, but I'm uh, avoiding talking about that, those technical details. But it's essentially that every finite dimensional algebra can be presented using this. And then the purpose of uh, representation theory, I will just take five more minutes. Uh, the, the purpose of representation theory is to classify the representations of such pictures. So what is a representation that you replace each vertex of your quiver by a vector space, a K vector space, and each arrow of the quiver by a linear map. That is a representation. So you just have a diagram of vector spaces and linear maps. A relation means that those linear maps should compose to zero. Or their sum should be equal. Like if there are two different paths between the same vertices, then there's some linear combination should be zero. So that is the restriction that we put using relations. And you want to understand what sort of representations are there. Can you understand all representations for a, for a particular quiver with relations? So that's the question. And while doing so, mathematicians have Mm, sort of classified it into three different parts. So here we call it finite representation type. So finite representation type means that uh, only finitely many representations are sufficient to describe all. You just have to identify finitely many. Then the rest two are um, infinite representation types, but they are again classified into tame representation type and wild representation type. So just like animals, yeah, some animals are tame, some animals are wild. In fact, there is a further classification inside tame class as domestic and non-domestic. So, uh, yeah, so exactly like animals. And what is the meaning of tame? That you have some control over them. Yeah, tame animals, they are not wild. They are not out of control. 
wild are totally uncontrollable i don't have enough time to give you definitions etc but uh, i can tell you that for example this particular one this is finite representation type okay this alpha beta is finite representation type l1 is tame representation type and this l2 is wild representation type and you can sort of guess that how many paths depending on how many paths are there the paths are too complex over here so therefore this is wild representation type and uh, in order to understand like whatever these finite representation types or tame representation types like what is the meaning of finite that you understand those finitely many presentations then you understand everything else so in order to make that particular uh, thing clear i i will share okay uh, before that i will i'll just draw one picture for all of you this is a picture which uh, which is very simple to write so this is alpha beta gamma delta and epsilon and these are the two relations delta gamma and gamma beta are two relations this is a tame representation type algebra and my student has drawn a very beautiful picture for which representations you want to understand so these are all the re representations if you understand like this is an infinite picture these dotted lines will go to infinity it's like a square shape with some hole yeah you can understand these things uh, if you study it a bit more then in if instead of two if you had three three such uh, cycles in that picture then you will get this kind of picture can you see it becomes even more exciting and yeah you can spend years to understand what kind of patterns there are in these pictures and uh, if there is anyone who wants to learn more about these things then i want to share some something like this is a book elements of representation theory of associative algebras especially uh, chapter 2 which uh, yes reverse and algebras that's there and two of my students have written very nice reports so this is available on my website so shashwat has written representation theory of reverse reports so you can read more about from there and the these pictures you can find in this joint report of isha and shashwat so here you can understand what what we are trying to do with this picture there are many more things which can be explained but due to lack of time i can't and i'm giving you references so i'm actively working on this in in this area like uh, i'm not sure if all the students are here so far like navendra is still here so he is currently working with me on string algebras then i have got more students like everybody is currently who is working with me is working on string algebra essentially or representation theory of papers and if any of you are interested in future then please do contact me and yeah i am open to taking questions now sorry about delay um does anybody have any questions for sir um you can either unmute and ask or you can put them in the chat box uh, excuse me sir sir can you please tell uh, the name of the book again yes it's assignment score on ski what should be our prerequisites for reading this book if you read the reports we need then uh, like you 
only need knowledge of basic algebra course which you will do in your second year but the, for the book you might need something more if you read the right parts then you don't need too much background if you just uh, if you are willing to just play around with diagrams then you don't need much so uh, i'm happy to share that like uh, isha gupta worked with me for one semester she did not have any background in algebra apart from just one abstract algebra course and linear algebra course and we wrote a paper together on this topic so if you are willing to learn there is yeah there, there is no <laughs> limit to it as such you just need a basic course on linear algebra on on abstract algebra yes so do we have any more questions perhaps not yes sir is there uh... yeah like uh, so i've done uh, read some basic uh, like uh, representation theory of finite groups so mm -hmm. is there any connection with that so yes. is that also has a very nice combinatorial thing in some cases like at least in the symmetric group there is very interesting stuff yes yes so actually uh, very good question farzan so uh, there is this subject representation theory of wevers and associative algebras that start uh, that has its root in 1970s when people were studying representations of dihedral groups so gelfand and ponomarev the paper is in russian so they were studying representations of dihedral groups and then they asked thought thought that okay this doesn't have anything to do with groups groups what are they yeah you just take a like categorically groups are or pictorially it is a single element and then many loops from that element to itself and you describe the multiplication for each element of the group you have one loop at that vertex and you describe the multiplication of that so it's like describing relations on a quiver so why not go more general so the representation theory of groups is contained in this subject this is far more general yes Okay. Is there any other question? If not, we can conclude the meeting. Uh, so that was a delightful talk, and I think everyone took something away from it, especially the people who survived till the end. Yes. And, <laughs> and it was amazing how such simple-looking diagrams can generate such a rich and complex theory, and that gave. and gave us another perspective on what you said at the start that a picture is worth a thousand words yes. so i would like to thank uh, professor kubair uh, for this excellent talk and also all the participants for joining uh, thanks. thanks to the organizers for inviting me oh uh, yeah it was a pleasure to have you sir okay i think uh, we can end this meeting now yeah bye bye